Welcome to the 61st Annual Storm Beat the Champs Target Score Show. Beat the Champs is brought to you by the Illinois State BPA, by Coolwick, and by Storm. The 61st Annual Beat the Champs Target Score Show featuring youth bowlers Abigail Starkey, Joss Weems, plus PWBA legend and Hall of Famer Kelly Kulik, and 15-time major champion number one bowler in the world, Jason Belmonte. The 61st Annual Storm Beat the Champs Target Score Show. Now, live from Poplar Creek Bowl in Huffman Estates, Illinois, here are your hosts, Bill Spagner and Randy Peterson. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 61st annual Beat the Champs. We are at Poplar Creek Bowl just outside of Chicago, Illinois, and this is the target score portion of this great event sponsored by Storm Bowling Products. I'm Randy Peterson, the PBA Hall of Famer. Joining me, uh, another Hall of Fame sidekick, a, a local legend, and a, a great, great coach in his own right. And Bill Spigner is joining us today. Um, Bill, you know you know this event as, as well as anybody. What can we expect to see in tonight's action? Well, it's been going on a long time in Chicagoland. It's the Chicagoland Institution for the Bowling Proprietors Association of Chicagoland. And it's it's going to be an interesting match. You got you're only bowling three games, and they set the target score for the girls and the guys, and the, the league bowlers that bowl bowled uh, December third through the ninth to establish their scores to try and win awards from the target scores here. But the league bowlers they actually bowl in their leagues, and they qualify to go to the next level if they get out of their leagues and or the house, and then the next level is the top 32 for girls and guys, and they get a chance to bowl for the big $10,000 prize. Awesome. All right, so let's talk about the players that we're going to be watching tonight. We'll start on the junior side. Uh, for the boys, it's Joss Weems. You know him very well, along with uh, our girls' side, Abigail Starkey, who you actually coach. And this is her center. This is where she bowls. Yep, and I'm going to take him her over Josh. Uh, uh, Josh, uh, <laughs> a right. fantastic young bowler. It's a, 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 he nicknamed himself the Black Unicorn, and rightfully so. He's a rare animal. You watch him bowl, he's charging a foul line like a rhino. He's ready to unleash power to the pins. Abby, the nickname is Sniper. She's not going to miss anything. She is so accurate, it's crazy. And she repeats shots, and she grinds and grinds and grinds. And she'll bowl 200, 220, 210, 190, then 250. So she's a grinder. Josh is a big game hunter. It's going to be an exciting match with those two. Abigail is already committed to the University of Nebraska. Uh, Josh Weems, he's got three Storm Youth Championships to his credit. Now on the professional side, we'll start with a seven-time winner on the PWBA Tour, and that's Kelly Kulik. Kelly's a Team USA coach, a junior coach right now, and uh, she's been on tour forever. And uh, it, unfortunately for Kelly, the women's tour got interrupted for a number of years in, uh, in her prime, but she came back. She's still one of the best ever, winning the men's tournament of champions against Chris Barnes at that time. That yeah. was unbelievable that she did that. And she's, uh, she's well-rounded. She's in so many different things, athletically, uh, dancing, and teaching. And she teaches dance. She teaches bowling. She runs camps. She's just one of the, our great bowling personalities that we have today. And then, uh, Amanda, all the way from Australia, uh, this guy is the number one ranked player in the world on the men's side. PBA Tour is 16 titles, 15 majors uh, for Jason Belmonte. 31 career total titles for him, and uh, Bill, just he's been a, a world beater for a number of years out on the PBA Tour now. What, what is it about him and his game that makes him so good? Well, it's uh, I've known him since he first came over. The first When he first came over to the Tour, we were hosting the PBA at Hawthorne Lanes, and I took some pictures of him and, uh, and some video. And before that, my son Robbie was going to Europe to bowl the tournaments, and when he was going to Indiana University, and he came back and says, Dad, you should see these two guys bowl, Pal uh, Oscar Palermo and Jason Belmonte. They're incredible. And they bowl with two hands. And I said, okay. And then Oscar comes over. He bowled, tried to win a spot 
on the tour when he became an exempt tour in Indiana. He stayed with us for a couple of days, and I watched this guy bowl. He knocked my eyes out. And I saw this. I said, he could be the greatest bowler that ever lived. So actually, I thought he would be better than Jason. But Jason has become unbelievable. Yeah. He's got more tricks in his bag than anybody I've ever seen. And he has patience and a mind that does not give up ever, no matter what's happening out there. He's going to figure out a way to make it happen. He's not a guy that complains about what happens. He's a guy to figure out what's happening. Yep. Never makes excuses. His work ethic is second to none. And I think he's maybe has one of the best mental games on tour. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, Kelly does too. Kelly's another one. And, uh, you know, Abby's that way. Uh, Josh, I don't know him that close, but the few times I've seen him bowl, uh, he definitely has it. And just a little mention, uh, Josh, is uh, it, his, his goal in life is to be a heart surgeon. His dad was a doctor. His dad passed away this last summer from a heart attack at 52 years old. Mm -hmm. And so Jerry Weems was a big part of bring, bringing Josh to all the events and stuff. And he was spectacular with uh, EYT, DeAndre Asbady's tour. And they were, he was a, a fixture in the youth bowling scene in the Midwest. And our hearts go out to the Weems family, Sharon, yeah. and the rest of them. Absolutely. It's, uh, tough. All right. So Storm is releasing two brand new bowling balls uh, tomorrow. And it's uh, the Absolute Power and Summit Peak. And those are the only two bowling balls that players can use for strike balls. They can uh, use a spare ball. But uh, those are the only two strike balls that will be going down the lane uh, in tonight's three-game total pin series for each player. Um, Jason Belmont, we're being told that he only brought absolute power. So that's how strong, strongly he feels about that ball. And again, folks, the release of the two bowling balls tomorrow, January 19th. Make sure you head on over to stormbowling.com and check out the two latest and greatest Absolute Power and Summit Peak. Bill, we're getting pretty close to finishing up with practice, and and then the players will hit. They'll, they'll head right into their their three game total pinfall. Yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting. The they're bowling out basically a house shot, so it's a little wet, dry side to side in front to back, and the volume of oil is less than what Jason would normally bowl on, and Kelly on the tour, and, and even the girl. The, uh, the kids, they bowl in high volumes of oil. They're not used to bowling on house shots in tournaments. They bowl on sport conditions almost all the time. So it'll be interesting to, to see how they navigate the, the, the pattern and uh, how it turns out. official scorekeeper in the booth with us so um i'm gonna rely on you well we got the scores up there on the overheads which is good because if you had to rely on me you're in big trouble well that you're assuming i can actually see that far well i can i'll let you borrow my glasses uh, okay. all right yeah so we should have a bet on this okay you know Go it, ahead. It's, i'm gonna t i'm gonna take the girls okay over uh, the guys all right i'll take the guys okay total pins so that's six games total right three and six three games yeah three games apiece yeah. and uh I'm going for the sniper You're going. and the smooth Kelly Kuehler. Okay. And the bet is? Well, I don't know. It's, one, uh, how much you got in your pocket? One million dollars. Whoa. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, I got to ask my wife for that. <laughs> uh, you can ask my ex-wife for that. Okay. <laughs> Tuggy? That was a little in and little tuggy. But her, she's lowered her rev rate, it looks like. She's just trying to get the ball to float off her hand so the ball would be less responsive to the oil and dry. For Jason, that's going to be a little harder with his rev rate. And let's see what Josh does here. Oh. You know, it, and that's the, the, the craziness of this game at times, right? I mean, all the power of Josh, and he leaves that 10 pin where Kelly kicks the 10 out. 
So it's angle and rotation. And that's just like 10 pins disintegrated in the back of the pit for Belmonte. Yeah, using that absolute power, and he has absolute power. I don't know which one's going to win. His power or the ball's power. <laughs> or, the, or the pins are going to fail. Yeah. I got that one a little right. A little about the back of the ball. Just... Abby. Oh, yeah. There it is. Holds, holds pocket nicely on that right lane for Abigail. Kelly, one in on the left lane, one right on the right lane, Bill. Yeah, it looks like they're all playing their own angles. As Abby's playing her angle a little down and in. Josh is further left. Kelly's kind of in the... In a neutral area around second arrow between the second and third arrow and Jason uh, didn't see the first shot but I'm assuming he's going to play right around 15 out to about 7 8 15 out to anywhere well he can do that Ooh, Ooh. nice double to start for Abigail Starkey you know first couple of shots on TV like this for these kids it's pretty amazing how good they threw it Ugh. We call that one Ugh. territory that we never saw when Ugh. we bowled. My ball used to hit like that, said me never. No, the lane surface didn't allow that. <laughs> Neither did my rev rate <laughs> or lack thereof. Well, nice shot had, there, Joss. You had a pretty good rev rate on the ball. Yeah. You, had, you had that great swing, one of the best swings that bowling had. Well, thanks, Bill. Back in the good old days. Yep, today's a good old day for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one she rotated a little bit more. The other one she got to the same spot, it just came a little off the front of her hand. Uh, she's kicking things out. She's getting cocky out there, I don't know. She get enough of it? She did. Yeah. Well, I was going to say something, but I'm going to hold it for later. Okay. okay. Suspense. I like it. Oh, it's a big suspense. Hopefully. <laughs> How come all three have looked, looked exactly the same? Yeah. That's, uh, maybe that's why he's the best that ever lived. Oh, no. <laughs> Joss is getting robbed on that left lane. He's not happy. He threw it good. He knew he threw it good. Yeah, when you throw it good, you know, hopefully good things happen. Got that around that one good. Ooh. Looked like she rolled that one better and it overhooked. Yeah, it did. Pick it up a roll quick. Uh oh. You gotta realize this is a fun match yeah. for, for them. You know, it's it's it, and they want to bowl good. They nobody ever wants to go out there and bowl bad. So they gotta handle it a little, little lightly compared to what you watch on the ESPN and on and Fox, especially Fox. Yeah, especially Fox. All right, Kulik looking for a first double, as is. Joss, Abby's working on three in a row, as is the man from Down Under. Do you know what a Vegemite sandwich is? No. I don't either. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had hey, this. Hey, Jason's picking on Abby. It's just not fair. He's trying to distract her. This is not good. <laughs> Abby, put the ball down. Start all over. Oh, she's not even, she's not even phased. Okay, maybe she was. Way to go, Jason. Yeah, she Oh, needed, my gosh. Uh, boo. Wow. How to Make Friends in Chicago by Jason Belmonte. Oh, man. I am so glad I'm not riding back in the same car with him. Bets are all off now uh, after that display of sportsmanship. All right, I'll let you, I'll let you buy out cheap. Okay. So oh, she made it! Oh my she God. made it! Oh, oh my gosh. gosh! Bow 
takes the four pin out of the pit to the six pin. Unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Now Jason's getting down on his hands and knees to apologize, which he should. No, he's actually saying, you know, the only reason why you made that is because of what I did to you before you left it. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, baby. Hey, there we go. Now, Bill, this is the first time the youth, the youths are included and in beat the champs to set a target score. Yeah, last year was the first year they had the youth division, and this year having a target score was a phenomenal idea. And uh, as far as marketing on this and, and supporting bowling for Chicagoland is just incredible. And uh, we're all treated to this. And I am, I'm a fan as much as I have been a bowler. So this is, uh, I'm in awe of this thing. Carry. There you go. I can't help it. I got to root. Sure. Yeah. I'm rooting for all of them. Me too. So. Come on, Belmo. It's a little wide. Ooh. You know, he kicks the 10 yeah. out. Six kicks the 10 out. Then he's got a messer coming over for insurance. Yeah, I don't know why he needs an absolute power ball with absolute power. I mean, it's, it's not an unfair game. Why don't you just call it the Belmo ball? Absolute power is kind of a given, right? Yes. All right. Joss, left lane, looking for his first double. He said the pocket every time. Yep. Let's see. New. Oh. What? All right, Bill, what's going on with him in that left lane? The ball just rolled a little too forward. It picked up a roll and entered the pins a little bit too straight. But it's hard to cha change because you know, the lanes are going to change a little bit. It's hard to change the balls. Kulik rolls a 7-10 on the right lane. Now Belmo, first five. Joss misses the 10 pin. Joss, I've got I've got a bet on you guys. What are you doing to me? Maybe well, I, hey, maybe I should go talk to him. I think you should. No, I'm staying right here next to you. Talk to this guy out here right now, this Belmo character. Oh, God, it looked like he got around that. Ooh. He did, he did. He got, he around, got around it just it a little bit. Ball. And the ball went sideways. Now, Bill, you've done thousands of lessons over the years when you take a guy like a belmont here or simonson the two-handed specialist that have that that really 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 high rev rate how critical is their release point uh it's very critical and you know it, that there leaving a solid nine people say well he should have struck and i would tell him well if he should have struck he would have struck something wasn't quite right he threw the ball good good location bad rotation Right. It had a little more side roll on it and went through the pins a little bit too steep. And he can't strike. Yeah, his ball is just getting a little too forward. Yep. All right, so now if you, if you use a golf reference, if I swing my driver at 100 miles an hour, my club head enters the ball one degree open or one degree closed, it's still on, it's still on the golf course, right? It might be right side of the fairway or left side of the fairway or maybe at the worst, maybe left or right rough. But if I'm swinging at 125 miles an hour, and I'm a degree open or close, the ball's off the planet. Okay, yeah, so isn't yeah, yeah. It, isn't it? Well, because it goes farther. Because it's so, it's it goes so much farther, and now your impact position is so much more critical. Wouldn't that be the same with anybody with a high rev rate? Oh, sure. It, and you know the the bowling balls are so good, and it's, you know they got the differentials in the balls. And a high differential ball, which these balls are, which means when you drill them different, they come out a lot different in reaction, mm. which also means when your release is a little different, it comes out more different than a ball that has like a pitch black that has sure. a low differential. It's more forgiving off the release, so it doesn't change its direction as much. But these balls got the power. You can arc them, so the angle can get tough. And it's hard to adjust for that. I mean, uh, there was two messengers on that 10 pin. That, that was just like a mugging. That's something I never saw. Uh, we have an assault on lane 16. There we go. That ball, ball changed. Into, yeah, ball, ball changed. changed. That's pretty smart. But the angle the ball went through the pins was totally different. 
Well, that's why this kid's one of the best youth bowlers in the country at his age. Under 15, he, nobody could beat him. Played through eight for Kulik, no doubles. And seven. Uh, Abigail. Sniper. On fire. All strikes, and she makes the four, six, seven in the fourth frame. She deserved making that after what she Belmonte did, oh, did no, to him. We're no going to have to take him out back. I mean, I don't know what he's thinking. This isn't Perth, Australia. I mean, this is Chicago. Well, there's a lot of muggings in Chicago. He better be careful. <laughs> All I know is I'm not going to be standing <laughs> too close to him when this is done. Well, he didn't change on that lane. No. And that he lost off the front of his yeah. hand. He, didn't, he, he missed it. But that's a pretty gutsy move. You think about it, you know, at that age, they're changing two different balls in two different lanes. Yep. And the thinking that, that under the pressure here, and you want to perform really well, and you're making that, those complex decisions. Now, Bill, you've seen a lot of uh, two-handed players. Bill, you've seen a lot of two-handed players. You've worked with uh, lots. Here, here's something you have to explain to me. You know, you and I were, were taught a, a different way, obviously. We use one hand, and we were all... We were always taught that the steadier our head, our heads were at release, the better, right? You keep your eyes on your target, and uh, you can stay more focused in the direction you want to throw it in and hit that target, be more accurate. The two-handers, with the exception of Jason Belmonte and a couple of others, but you watch Josh, you think about Anthony Simonson, they've got a lot of head movement. It's a lot. A lot of it is upper body rotation. Because their 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 whole core of the body rotates a lot more. Okay, but what smaller, about the up and down with the head? Well, the, the head, head movement. The head gets too low. If you if you see a two hander and a head, you can't see their head from a level view going into the release zone. They're in trouble. Like he gets his head below his shoulders. I mean, there's a big but he dip, comes up. Big dip right before he gets yeah. into the slide, and then his head comes up. That's a lot of head movement. You watch Belmonte, he yeah. doesn't have very much. No, he's got less than he used to have, too. But but you got to look at the size of the person and throwing a 15-pound bowling ball versus the size of Jason throwing a 15-pound gotcha. bowling ball. So that dip down and coming up creates a lot of velocity gotcha. with the arm swing going through. And it's necessary. And as they get bigger and stronger, you start refining it. But it takes strength. Like Abby, you know, she's very slight and with very good shape. As she gets stronger, she's going to be even better. And right. She's just amazing as it is with her size. So, but it's so, kind of like a Liz Johnson type bowler. So the one thing I, I love about Abigail's game is that she's got ball speed. Yes. Now, now yes. she can learn how to get some wrist in it. She's going to have the whole package. Right. We, we talked about it. And I just said, you know, I don't want to take her out of what she's learned to do. And, you know, we finesse her release a little bit and stuff. And we... She's learned to play within the angles she needs to play to play the lanes to get the angle through the pins. And she knows what the ball is doing. Pretty good stuff. Well, got around that one, too. Got it wide, got around it, goes light. But it's 255 opening game for Jason Belmonte. And well, is she going to make the double pinochle? I would think so. She made would, the other one. This well, is wouldn't be surprised. Ah, how about two sixty one for Abby? All right, Kelly. Well, looks like I got the lead after game one. Just saying. Okay, there's a ball change for Josh on that lane, but that lane is a little, it looks yeah. a little tighter down lane for the angle he's playing. Yeah, it is. And he's, he's getting a little off the front of his hand. He's probably doing that on purpose because if he gets around it, it, it goes hooks sideways. sideways. Yeah, yeah. So that's not a, he didn't throw the ball bad there. It's just not quite matched up to quite the right way. I not, mean, not the right shape. Right shape. Yeah, he's, uh, he's throwing the ball really well. At the skill level, they're going to hit the pocket all the time. It's just a matter of carrying the pins. Even the one, the two eight, you're still between the one three pins, 
And so it's like when we bowled on tour, or I bowled on tour, the good bowlers always hit the pocket. They just didn't carry. I was a little soft at my speed. My carry wasn't good in places. When my carry sure. was good, I can compete. Right. Other than that, it was just a grinder. And I, you know, if I had the speed, it makes a big difference. So, okay. So, how do you equate that to today's game when players that have rev rates like Jason, their carry percentage is eighty percent, eighty-five percent, where your medium rev guys leave a couple week tens a game. How do they keep up with that? They can't. They can't. They don't. You know, but you know, it's sometimes like. Last week in Wichita, the lanes were a little easier, and uh, everybody had a chance at the pocket, and they had angle because they, they played out. So there was no advantage to being able to do what he did last week. Next week is going to be totally different. That's why it's a tour. So every week it should be different. Different bowlers can have different chances of doing well, and uh, if you're good enough, you get there more often than everybody else. All right, Bill, we're going to take a quick break. Back for lots more action here at Poplar Creek Bowl in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Stay with us. What is it about bowling that captivates us so much? Mastery of the game is impossible, but perfection is just within reach. He does it! It is beautiful, frustrating, and at times humbling, and gratifying. Bowling beckons us to keep trying and forces us to accept the infinite variables out of our control. Success seems to lie 60 feet ahead, but the real battle takes place six inches between your ears. So if no matter how many times you fail, you would still do anything, and I mean anything, just to get 1% better. We know exactly how you feel. Just to make a point, if you don't look good on the lanes, you won't do good on the lanes. Shop the look. Cool Wick, proud jersey partner of Storm Bowling. Everything from the Storm Black Label Collection to Cool Wick Quick Ship jerseys. Each one designed to let your jersey do the talking. Cool Wick jerseys, hoodies, hats, and more. Cool Wick. Visit CoolWick.com. Select, customize, and be cool. Cool Wick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the 61st annual Beat the Champs. I'm Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, Hall of Famer Bill Spigner, and joining us in the booth, uh, the 34 years as director of this great event since retired, uh, welcome Bill Duff. Bill, thanks so much for being here. And, uh, you know, this is uh, your time to give us maybe a brief history lesson about this great event. Great. Thanks, Randy. I'm glad you're here today. Too. Thank um, you. We, uh, we, this, contest started in 1961-62 so it's been going on for over 60 years and uh, so there's a big tradition in the Chicagoland bowling community there's really two different uh, contests in one and the first one is of course setting the target scores and every league bowler having a chance to to beat the champ and then the second part of it is an actual tournament where the uh, top bowlers win uh, great prizes uh, back in the day it was cars in fact uh Bill's son, Robbie Spigner, won a car one I year. I heard that. I mm -hmm. heard that rumor that, that well, Robbie won a car. I have to brag on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, anything he can do to get out from buying his kid a car. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he threw a storm bowling ball at that time, a storm rain of fire. That's why you won a car. That's right. Yeah, I can vouch for that. So, yeah, and, and now it's a $10,000 first place prize for the men and the women. But um, what's interesting is we had a sponsor with the Chicago Sun-Times. The originator uh, of the contest was a sports editor for the Sun-Times. His name was Sandy Shub, um, and he started this whole thing and then uh, got uh, a gentleman named Sam Weinstein, who um, owned Universal Bowling and Billiards and was the 10-pin tattler. Uh, he worked for WGM. In fact, he was a master of ceremonies for the days um, when Jerry Lewis was bowling. And, uh, and uh, being on WGN gave us an opportunity for the uh, 
super to, to, to use the super station then this was before cable so it really got it got out there and the tradition was it was taped ahead of time and then uh, broadcast on Christmas Day which was a, a, a huge tradition and then uh, and, and so Sam Weinstein uh, had uh, done the show for many many years and then uh, Jan Schmidt who was the voice of the Lady Pro Bowlers tour along with Carmen Salvino did it for for more than 20 years after that. And then we used some local talent um, here, Sean Rash and DeAndres Beatty uh, helped us on the show too. So it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been great. We've, you know, uh, Kelly Kulik's bowled on this show now four years. It used to be that the BPA, being affiliated with the BPA, the, we always asked the All-Star, and um, after the All-Star, it became the US Open, the US Open champions to uh, set the target scores. They were our first invite. And uh, it's, it's been going on now. You know, things have changed so much with newspapers and bowling from 1961-62 to now. But wow, did we find a sponsor with Storm and what they can provide. And, you know, we went from at a time where it was an invitation only and you almost had to, had to sign an NDA. I don't even think they had NDAs back then. Oh, yeah. I remember <laughs> that when we hosted it, you know, you, yeah. you couldn't get in the door. They were going to get a gun on you. And, and and you couldn't you couldn't tell anybody what the score was until it was broadcast on Christmas Day, and of course social media t took care of that. Yeah, sure. And so here we are today with hundreds of bowlers here, a lot of youth, and now with the youth component that uh, that we've added with uh, Storm's help has really just keeps making this contest better and better. I mean, I think if you look down the list of some of the names that have been here. And you start at the top of the list with Don Carter, then Dick Weber, Billy Hardwick, Jim Godman, Nelson Burton Jr., Earl Anthony, Marshall Holman, Mark Roth, Carmen Salvino. Um, it just, you know, the greatest to ever play the game. And, and they've all been a part of this. Dave Houston, Mike Albee, uh, Del Ballard Jr., Jason Couch, Pete Weber, Norm Duke. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, and it really says a lot about this this uh, this event. Yeah, we've we've they've helped make the show what it is. What do you think about our our bowlers here, Bill? Who, who impresses you the most? And be honest. <laughs> I tell you what, it's just so great to have Belmo here. <laughs> Did you see that? You know what we call that? We call that pure filth. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's great to have him here, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the guy's just uh, an attention magnet, and as as it should be. I mean, he's done some great things in the sport, and, and, I, and I, it was going to be a topic of conversation for Bill and I, but we might as well just start it now. You know, when Norm Duke says, you're the greatest that's ever lived, I mean, you got to kind of you got to kind of pay pay heed to that, right? I mean, he Norm Duke honestly thinks he is the greatest that's ever lived. Well, I I don't disagree with that uh, ever. <clears throat> He's a, a, he does things that nobody can do, and it doesn't matter. You put the you put him on the lanes long enough. He's going to figure it yeah. out, and he figures it out faster than anybody. And, yeah. and you can see what he does to the pins. It's yeah. it's beyond what anybody else. And plus, he's smooth. He repeats. He's accurate as can be. It's it's just people have no idea how good this man is. And, he, and he's it, won 15 majors. That's uh, it's incomprehensible. Yeah. I loved Earl, and Earl was accurate. Yeah. And he didn't hook it a lot. Jason no. is just as accurate as Earl with ball. I think about that for a minute. Right. I mean, that's uh, pretty amazing. Jason does a lot for bowling. He was in teaching. Uh, I was. Worked for him for International Art of Bowling and DeAndra for a while. We did some clinics together. And he's into that part of it, too. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't just bowl. He's a good and will ambassador for the sport yep. outside of off the lanes. Right. It's not just on the lanes. He's, he's really a good person for our sport, as they all are out here. All these people here today are just as good as you can get. Yeah, Josh got his ankles in there a little bit. He's got yeah. a little yeah, yeah. balls tipping right now. And he's figuring it out. He's figuring out the the feel. Yep. I mean, it's, it's all feel. You know, you can hit the pocket, but then you got to figure out how to carry, and that's the, that's a bowler's responsibility. Yeah, Jason is starting to lose a little bit. Another, one at one out of seven. You know. Another one wide right. Okay, how about uh, putting a nice a nice bow on this 61st annual Beat the Champs, Bill? 
Well, it's just fantastic to see so many people out here, to see that it is, a, an, an, there's an energy in here that uh, just, I don't know, it, it makes what this contest is about. And, and of course, charity. This is a charity event. And having that tied into our pros being here and Storm sponsorship, couldn't ask for anything more. Well, we really appreciate you having all of us. You know, and you look at you look around the crowd, Bill, and Bill, uh, you got the commissioner of the PBA tour, Tom Clark, in attendance. Uh, you got some. Oh, oh. she almost made the big thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she went with the other way. Last time she shot the four seven, she said, "No, that didn't work. I'm going the other way." There, there. Now that's thinking. You think about that mm -hmm. complex thinking. If it doesn't work, they do something different. Yeah, the, these youngsters really have a head start uh, compared to when you and I were growing up and oh, we're yeah. their age, right? I mean, everything is accessible online. And, I mean, if there's something you want to find out, you can go on the Internet and find it out. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and and what's, what I'm noticing is these events, the televised events, you know, we did, the, we did that um, event last week in uh, Wichita, and these youngsters get on, and they're unfazed by – the bright lights and the cameras. Yeah, they grow up with it. You know, it's like, amazing. Like Josh and Abby, they bowl all these tournaments, and, Je and Abby bowls 20 to 5 to 30 tournaments a year. And it's every weekend, and she's yeah. bowling on sport conditions almost 99% of the time. Yep. And same thing with Josh. And the kids want the tougher conditions. Yeah. When we grew up bowling, they were tough. They, yeah. It was different. And going back to what you learned how to do, you learned how to do by imitating. You watch right. a good bowler bowl, you want to do what they did. And they're playing the gutter, you want to play the gutter. They're playing the fourth arrow, you want to play the fourth arrow. So you learn all these little things. Now you, you know what it is, but it doesn't mean you can do it because you mix the bowling balls in with the oil patterns and yourself. So you got three major components of bowling good. Yeah. You the ball in the lane, and the lanes are pretty elementary now with the patterns. You yeah. know where you should start. But how do you fit your ball roll into playing right. the right part of the lane so you can play the front end and the mid lane yep. the right way on the fresh? Yep. And then when it transitions big time, you both shot moves way in, then you got to play the back end. So it goes from playing the front end right. to the back end. I, I, and, and Jason can do it all. Yeah. I, I think one of the, the, the coolest things of what you said was when I was a kid growing up watching the Pro Bowlers Tour on ABC, after the shows, I would take my favorite guy and I had this small rubber ball. And I would emulate that bowler and throw balls down the hallway in my house. Yep. Well, I would. It was I, every, and, and, but now keep in mind, we'd already bowled league, mm -hmm. right? Then come home and then watch the show. And then I'm in the hallway trying to pretend that I'm the same guy that just won the tournament. Well, you became the guy that won the tournament. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know it was going to turn out that's quite that's very true. You know, the, the one thing you, you talk about that, and, and, and it happens today, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll speak for myself, when I was learning how to bowl, I would try to imitate what the person looked like. I would try to feel like they looked mm. and trying to do what, yeah. whatever they did. I totally get it. And they do it now. And in all my lessons, you know, I'll ask the person if they got, you know, been bowling a while and stuff. Are you, do, are you follow anybody? Are you trying to imitate anybody? And they said, well, I kind of like Jason Belmont. So I... If they're a two-hander, I'll bring Jason up. I'll say, okay, this is what he looks like. This is what you do. It's not that you have to be like Jason. You just got to know more about what you are doing so you can visualize what you're doing better. Right. Uh-oh. Remember the last time he went a little light on that lane, and, and now yep. it's 3 six, ten. Yeah, I got a little softer on that one. So I'm I trying to get it to I think corner, it right? just got it. Yep. That's it. Bad break for uh, Abby, too. And yeah, we don't, need to, we don't need to talk about that pin. <laughs> we don't need to talk You're about right that pin or Ernie Slagle. Just, <laughs> just, just throw it out there. Well, just to have you know, every time one of my kids says, he's a solid eight, they say, what, what, did, what did Ernie say? <laughs> Not to pick on you now. He said... But they're Bill, saying it in practice. Bill they have no said, idea what they're talking about. Bill, it, it, was 20, it was 27 years ago. You can't forget I'm still it. still in There's, therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but you've made it, made it easier for, for some, some, some of us, though, that do, when we do leave an 8-pin, we said, you know what? That 8-pin doesn't mean anything compared to another person I know that yeah. threw the ball twice as good. Well, that, 
You know what? I'm, you would I'm going to be, oh. be the first one to tell you that that sucked <laughs> it, 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 that day. <laughs> well, right? I bowled Rich Caruba in Trenton, New Jersey, the third game of the stepladder. I need a strike to close him out. I leave a stone eight. He goes up and throws a Brooklyn to oh, beat yeah. me. Of course. Then he was finished second to Jay Robinson. But, you know, I didn't yeah. begrudge him. I mean, I threw the ball uh, the way I wanted to throw it. It was just, uh, it's just, but it wasn't for a title in the major championship. And that was, you know, was a, I can't imagine the heartbreak in that. Yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, I was with Brunswick at the time, now with Storm for 25 years. But, you know, it was a Brunswick sponsored event. And, yeah. Bear, you know, Bear was the sponsor. And oh. there was some added bonus money there for his staffers, you know, and. Yeah, that Ernie Schlegel just, uh, he ruined Christmas. He ruined Christmas that year. Yeah, yeah. We are almost the end of game number two. I'll give you a rundown real quick of max scores. Belmonte can shoot 259. Kulik, 181. Abby, 195 with a spare. She's got to cover the 4-9. And Joss can shoot 247. We're not going to talk about bet anymore. That's for sure. Well, no, it's it's because it's not looking real good for you, Bill. I know it. Uh, let's see. You did have 480 after one, 13. So you had about a 37 pin lead going into game two. He took the girls. I took the guys. Oh, okay. Get away, get away, Joss. Get him. <laughs> get him, Joss. All right, there Kelly. Yeah, you know, I just think they all had the lanes for the two-handers today. I didn't know that. See, I did. That's why I took it's, the guys. Uh, yeah. First, when you need him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he got that little reaction. He's got that fire in his belly. Yeah, he's going to be in the 240s. He's a competitor. Yeah, they both are. Jason moved way in on that one and floated it away out there. I'm not sure he's liking that right lane anymore, Bill. But you think, you think about what he's done on that lane, he's not striking. He didn't do the same thing the next time. Like well, came late, left the two pin, and he softened up a little bit. That time, then he came high. This time, he moved. It looked like seven, eight boards yeah. left, and got soft and arced it more. Yeah. Now, that, now, how do you turn that on and off like that in that that range of play? It's well, just it's just incomprehensible. That's just the way his mind works, right? Yep. And Simo has a big range of play, but yeah, he, he has a bigger range. Simo's better straight. Jason's better hooking it. Yeah. So in between, both work phenomenally. That's why they're the two best. And Tackett, you know, he's, he's pretty special, too. Tackett's he bowls with one hand. That's, one that's hand. unusual today. Incredible. Approaching almost 600 RPMs. Now he lofted that one more. Now that didn't work. That was a Sorry. whiff. Now he could he get some air time on but, that but, one. He moved further back yeah, right. But he, like you said, he's trying something different every time. Every time. And it's been four shots in a row now that he has not struck on that leg. Just think of the confidence. There it goes. They just think of the confidence that you can make a change like that. And if it doesn't work, you can do it on the next thing. And he's totally committed to what he did. Yeah. And he changes again. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to do. I, I, I can't do it. It's like a bowl a game, a bowl 250 with a ball. And I go week 10, strike, week 10, double, week 10. That ball would have been gone three frames before with Jason. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would suck it up for 2 out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Guys, we are going to go to break right after her spare attempt here. I'd like to thank our guest, Bill Duff. Again, he was the past executive director for 34 years of this great event. Bill, thank you so much for joining us and uh, look forward to many more of these. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about the history of the contest. Yeah, me too, Bill. We've known each other a long time and uh, you came in after we sold our bowling center, I think. Did you? Or were you there when I was there? Just you a were few there years yeah. before. So thanks for Thank all you, you did for Chicagoland Bowling. And uh, thanks, Bill. They miss you.
We all miss you. Thanks. I'm going to be around. All I'm right. still going to okay. be around. Thanks again, guys. All right, folks. We are going to take a quick break. The Hall of Famers will be back with you for the third and final game here from Poplar Creek Bowl just outside of Chi-Town. Don't go anywhere. I love baseball, I love the White Sox, I'm from the South Side, so this is pretty much a dream come true for me. Yeah, I work in baseball, I have a passion for bowling. I've been bowling about 25, 30 years now, and I just love the sport of bowling. Tried to figure out a way to get the guys together outside of bowling. I came up with, uh, with the Bowlers Day, and I went to my superiors and they said, hey, you know, you can put it together, make it happen, go for it. And that's one thing about the White Sox is, you know, nothing is off limits. And that goes back to our owner. You know, we've got the best owner in the world here. 20 years later, we're still doing Bowlers Day. It's to bring people together, and that's what baseball is about. It's a family. It's a family sport. You know, you come out here, you bring your families out, and then when you can get people that's friends from different neighborhoods and different areas, different bowling centers to come together, and we see each other in passing, but to see each other in a different atmosphere, that's awesome. And we are back. Randy Peterson, Bill Spigner, Poplar Creek Bowl here in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. I've never heard of Hoffman Estates, but I have heard of Chicago. Well, Hoffman Estates became famous in bowling uh, when the Peterson left Chicago and AMF bought the Peterson. They moved up here down the street to uh, Hoffman Lanes for a number of years and Hoffman Lanes has since closed. So the, the bowling world knows where Hoffman Estates is because of the Peterson. And folks, make no mistake about it, zero relationship between that Peterson and this Peterson. No, that was with a T, P-E-T. That is correct. I'm, I'm, mine's with a D. Pederson. And that's why everybody calls it Pederson. It's Peterson, Pederson. All right. Peterson. How about Bill Monty, uh, Bill? We've got double, and then he goes through the schnozola and leaves that big split on that right lane, that pesky little right lane. Yeah, I, th I think all the people sitting there has tilted the lane a little bit. And, you know. <laughs> the topography's changed it's a bit. It's changed, yep. All right, we've got Josh uh, Joss on the left lane. He's got nine spare, nine spare back to back, and Abby's strike nine spare. But Bill, there's a little bit of controversy right now. Now, I was told at the beginning of this that the players could only use either the absolute power or the summit peak. Those are the two new balls that are going to be introduced. 
or on sale tomorrow, available to the public. And Abigail snuck in a Vivo, a virtual reality blackout. I think that's what she's throwing. I'm sorry, virtual energy blackout. Yeah, I just saw that. And, uh, maybe she didn't get the memo. You mean Belmonte sitting right there watching her and he didn't say anything? Just well, like just like when she split and then made the 467. Yeah. For those of you just joining us, she did make the 467. Well, this is a pretty new release, too, and another fantastic bowling ball. It really Asymmetric is. Asymmetric pearl gets on the lane really nice. <laughs> now made two out of three. Yeah, that uh, that Vivo is outstanding. There's so many players that uh, really like that ball as well, but I can't wait for the new releases to come out. The Absolute Power and Summit Peak. And well, it's a good decision. Abby piping it with the virtual energy energy blackout. Now, Bill Monty, left lane. Just add a little drama like this is live Fox television. Belmonte, left lane. Could I yell at him? <laughs> moved yeah. in, moved in, and got softer, right? Yeah, yeah, the ball is pushing longer, so they get a little transition. You know, the transition in the oil—that's not the whole part of it. It's the topography makes such a big difference. You move a little bit, you hit a—it's like peaks and valleys out there. You can't see it, but. The ball reads it. Even Josh on that pair of the ball is starting to labor in the back end. So there's enough transition where the ball is picking up a little quicker and then a little carry down. It's not quite coming back. And, Bill, what do you think that uh, the high rev rates do in terms of transition? I think they make the shot move in a lot faster. You know, high rev rates using the bowling balls of today, they're designed to soak up the oil, not move it. And they still pushes it a little bit, but it soaks up so much oil, the fronts go so quick, and then you got to change your angle as you move into the oil, and you got to go left to right, the ball just doesn't pick up. It's, a, it's not even the back end. It's not, it's not like the old day carry down. It's, right. just, it's a totally different thing. And, uh, and then topography going across the lane differently, you get different reactions. It's hard. There's a lot to it. She moved out. She moved way right. And the ball just kind of labors there. So if if I'm following Abby versus following Belmonte, I'm gonna get I'm gonna find a lot more jet wash from Belmonte than I am from Abby. Just oh, yeah. because of the difference in rep rates. Well then we gotta determine where to play. You know, one thing about Abby. She plays her angle so straight to the front. And if you think of all the patterns, all the blend is in the first 30 feet of the lane. She could play up that blend in the front end where the hook ball, the guys hook it a lot, move in a lot further. Right. So she doesn't lose her front end reaction. Right. She doesn't get the back end reaction they got. So it makes a big difference. And, but a, a, actually, when tournaments go on, the pack leads where to play. So if everybody starts out and they burn up the lanes the right way, like the tour does now, then everybody just keeps moving in. Unless the pattern's really hard. I saw, you know, at the World Series last year, I watched one pattern. They, they couldn't move in, they couldn't move out. It's right. just, it was brutal. Yep. Whoa, look at this, a backup ball. <laughs> All right, that's a Simo. He's sticking to the Simo's book. I actually, what, what, I, the, the U.S. Open board it was in Canada in Canadagua. I watched him bowl. He threw a backup ball in the finals. We were there the day before the TV show. Oh. Well, it, 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 it kind of explains why, it's, especially last week in Wichita, where the players used so much urethane, because it allowed them to stay farther right yeah. longer. Because once they moved in, even if they threw reactive, they couldn't get the ball to respond the same way twice with a lot of angle. Yep, the ball just hydroplaned out with that volume of oil. I don't know what the volume was last week. Was it 31 mils? 30 uh, 29? 29. So that's a higher volume pattern. Short, but a, but a lot of volume. Yeah, and it's all up front. So if you go through the left to right in the front with that volume, and the ball just speeds up as going down the lane. So yeah. you have to keep it in front of you. So right. It's... That's what makes bowling hard, and it, it's always been hard. It's just different hard today than sure. hard used to be. Yeah, because you're watching that going, why Why don't these guys use reactive and move in and just bang on it, you know, and, and then maybe use some of that friction to the right that the urethane ball, balls have created. But the problem is 
The only friction the urethane balls create is in the front. Yeah. And then they just drag oil down lane. Yeah, it's a lower flare. It's a lower differential balls at the low flares carry it down. But that's why you don't see any of these urethane balls at high flares. Nobody uses them because they flare up just like resin, so right. it's no difference. So you don't get the urethane reaction where you get the, the hold in the back end because of narrow flares. He's doing it on this lane, too. Now, that's second out of the box. Like I said, if it's not working, he's going to figure out the way to so, make it work. How is that? So do you think he's just showing off? Or, no, I, th I think he totally intentional. I think he legitimately felt he had a chance because when he moved in, the ball just hydroplaned out. And if he softened up, it hooked a little quick, got a little firm, and went too long. And now he's playing a narrow path to the pocket. He looked like Earl Anthony out there with that track to the pocket. Well... Maybe the path, but the rev rates were a little different. Well, you know, Earl, Earl wasn't a real high rev guy. Well, he didn't have those high rev but, bowling balls either. But I mean, how yeah, many? It was all the bowling ball. It had nothing to do with Earl. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. Pocket 710 for Abby. That lane has been not been nice. Two double pinnacles, a yeah. four, six, yeah. seven, which she made, and yeah. a 710. I, I fully expect her to give it a go. If she makes this, this place is going to go crazy. It would be uh, pretty nice. Yeah, you know, I, I see a lot of kids leave at the 710, and they go up there and go all out toward as hard as they can. They never hit it. Right. I say, you don't have to throw it harder. The spare ball goes faster anyways. Right. You just got to hit the pin. Yeah. That pin popped out to the yeah. right a little bit. You know, that's one the, one thing that the youngsters got to learn. Even even adults, they see them throw rockets at spares, and they get their foot all form, all messed up. Yeah. And they don't exactly. have any, anything from shot to shot that are saying. Right. Well, Sean Rash used to do that all the yeah, time. Yeah. Said, what, you don't Why need are you to throwing do that. it that hard? There's no reason. Why that hard? You're throwing it. You're throwing a plastic ball straight anyway. There's yeah, no There's no need to throw it 30 miles an hour. Yep. And they. Uh, you watch somebody, hey, you know, Josh, I haven't seen him get outside his tempo at all. I, yep. don't, I, just, I don't see Jason ever getting outside his tempo. Or the guys are, the people that are really successful, they're just shot to shot, consistent as they can, speed control, whether it's fast, slow, or whatever it is. They have the control. Got that one in a little bit yeah. and pays for it. Six, seven, ten for Belmonte. That pair is disintegrated Kulik 170 the last game she shooting she's in the 179s right now well my heart goes out to Kelly but the people that are gonna have to beat her score are very happy <laughs> there could be a lot of happy people out there that they beat Kelly Kulik yeah. one of the best ever be a lot of Kulik fans uh, in the Chicago land area it's a little back up at that you know they've been starting to do that they throw like at the 369 or the 3610 rather they started to throw this little peeler, a little little slight backup ball at the 3610 on tour. Well, it makes sense. You don't chop. I saw Jason do that in practice. I said, that's pretty good. I didn't realize that that's become a thing. That was a solid seven. Pretty high flush. Yeah, that, that could, almost a fast eight. I think EJ Tackett's got a little bit of that backup as well. So I've seen a lot of players starting to do that at the 3610. Now Kelly moved way in, soft stroking it, trying to hook it. And oh, we got another 710 shot. Another 710. <sighs> Going left-handed? What did she say? Yeah, I bring in the lefty, I guess. Oh. Baseball. Well, Kelly doesn't have a spare ball with her. I was surprised at that. Or she had been using it. She's pretty good at flattening her hand out. Yeah. Rolling it end over end. Right now, as it stands, Kelly Kulik will never have to buy a meal in this town again. Yeah. <laughs> or in all of Chicagoland. Well, everybody's going to win their awards. All right, Abby. Abby kicks its head out late for a double now. Belmonte stepping back up the left lane. Going with the backup ball the last three shots. This uh, guys he's got more tools than a TV repairman. Now all my two-handed students are gonna want to throw backup balls. Now you see what he's done. They to me. should. I mean, you know, Simon, Simonson won a tournament. 
Throw the back ball. That was amazing. Yeah. That was truly amazing. I love that kid. I mean, I just loved watching him ball. I just love He's, how he can do things so different so fast. Just like Jason, but, he, but totally different style. Yeah. Like, Jason looks effortless. Simonson looks like he's using a lot of energy. He right? looks like the black unicorn out yeah. there. He just puts it in there, balls out. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Just goes goes ahead, just fires. But but they're always doing something different. It's calculated. It's not guesswork. They're, yeah. they're no, they know what they're doing. They know what they can do. And they don't quit trying to learn to do things differently or even more to hone their skills. Carrie. She's good at getting that 10 out. As yeah. long as she has a little bit of angle, right? If she can keep it in front of her. Well, she knows when she leaves the 10, she's she's changing. It's, it's subtle changes. It's different. You don't see the wide changes like a Jason. Right. She knows how to manipulate the pocket. She knows that when a ball goes too long or rolls too early, she knows the feel off her hand. If she loses it a little bit, catches a little bit, you, know, you work on those things mentally. You do, you're working on feel, and then you work on what the reaction is to the feel, and then you start learning what to do with your feel and to get the reaction you need. You know, he's going straight. Uh, he's going a little too straight. He's, that was some, it's some air time yeah, as well. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a, you know, it's not the score that they bowl. It's what they're doing out there that's very different sure. than most people don't even think about. And everybody says, well, she bowled a bad game. Well, she bowled a bad score, but she probably physically didn't bowl bad. It's just that she couldn't get the right combination matching up, which it's always been that way. Mm. Now when somebody bowls bad, they say it didn't match up, but they don't change anything. Right. They said my ball didn't work. Well, the ball didn't work because you didn't work. Right. Kelly finally gets a strike and uh, down her hands and knees and thanks God. It's, uh, she's done a, hundred, a ton of different things today, just trying to get the angles right in the pocket. And uh, you know, one thing on tour is you bowl a game, you have a rough game, you can't get your angles, you're done with that game. You only got five, lane, five frames on a pair. So here they have to bowl three games on a pair and, they, and if it starts changing, they, they don't get to go to another pair. So it's, it's a different game when you're bowling on one pair. Well, they got to fix Abby's score up there. They gave her a nine miss, she made the spare. And Belmonte looking to shoot 199. He needs to double up. Or, I'm sorry, he needs to strike out. He's got a strike working. Well, I was hoping he would trip to three. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it would have been great. The way he made those pins dance around earlier. Just shows you how... how fragile it is I, I, I got I got a story to tell you about Johnny Petraglia he told me years ago when Jason was just annihilating everyone on the PBA tour he says mark my words you'll get one of these two-handers that'll throw a backup ball as well and sure enough it happened it's it's happened yep And they don't do it mocking the game. They do it because they oh, feel they it's do. the they, best tool they, they can absolutely. have to get the pins down. They're, they do it because they feel it's the best way for them to strike. Mm -hmm. All right, Kelly with a double. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, she looks fine throwing the ball, but... Kelly wants to go to a different pair. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, uh, that one she threw pretty good. And it got out there and just uh, a little softer and picked up a little quick. So the hard part with a lot of bowlers, it's it's the score that means everything. It's not the process they go through to get there. And it's not always the score. Hello? Hello? All right. One in the 54 gives her total for three games. Uh, let me do the quick math. How about 553? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go up to the front, Bill, and uh, do some interviews. Okay. Hang out for a minute. I will. So stay tuned, stay seated for just two, three minutes here, and uh, Mr. Randy's going to come up and interview the players real quick. Finish off this broadcast. Test, test. Is it going to the house? Up there. Is this going to the house as well? The house? No. So they can't hear the interview? Where do you want me? Right here? All right. Can you all gather around? All right. Love the backup ball. It's fun to watch. Got a little, uh, got a little, little goofy, huh? back and we're live with our four players and we're going to start with Abby. Abby, everyone's dying to know exactly what Jason said to you when you left that 467 split. What did he say? Well, he's oh, I don't even remember what he said. What did you say to her? Unfortunately, I think I was misunderstood. I was trying to give Abigail a compliment. I said uh, because she wasn't ready and I went first, I kind of went out of turn and I said this may be the only time that I'll be in front of Abigail tonight. And I was kind of happy with that because I was like, hey, I'm like, she's going to beat me tonight. But I think it was misunderstood. And then they all booed me. <laughs> and then she... As they should. <laughs> yeah. Why? And then she makes it. But I thought that was a compliment. And then you step up and make it. What did you think when you saw all three of them go down? Well, I was a little shocked, um, to say the least. I didn't know where that pin came from. All right. And then what did you say to him after you made it? I just said, oh, I took it as a compliment. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, uh, Abby, you shot 648, so nice ball, and that's your score that you posted. And we're going to move on to Joss. Joss, I, I noticed that you had a little bit of trouble early on. You were going through a lot of different adjustments. What made you decide to settle into the way you played the lanes late? Um, it was just a lot of moving around and seeing what actually didn't tap. Um, yeah, I, it was just a different way I had to uh, move my hand at the release, and uh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> and how would you describe this whole experience? Um, it's a lot of exposure. I'm really, uh, really grateful to be here in front of all these people bowling. Uh, this is just a great experience. All right, Josh, thanks very much. 627 for you, young man. Kelly, we're going to go to you. Um, just so you know, you're probably never going to have to pay for a meal again in the Chicagoland area. Uh, a little bit of struggles out there. Tell us what you were seeing and why your ball reaction was so tough. Uh, you know, Abby said that straighter here is greater, so I tried breaking down the track with Jason. He just took a little more I do. I got left, but I just couldn't carry it to the pin, so I just tried to do a change up the strategy, go back right, but that didn't work either. So I, after that, the lane would just kind of kind of got a little challenging towards the end trying to strike on this was was difficult so you know hey i you know showed my versatility not the scores i wanted but it was a lot of fun well and this is your fourth time being in this event isn't it it is it's probably the lowest score i've shot in the four appearances but you know the illinois bowling prior association does a wonderful job hosting this event i'm glad storm came on board and it's great to see that the future generation of our sport just paved the way for the next generation and i know the fans here love to have you so thanks very much for being here kelly and then you young man 680 led all the scores and went with a backup ball late. Tell us why you went to that decision. Yeah, I think like Kelly said, we kind of tried to play them a little further right in practice and there was just so much friction 
Um, and we both, you know, we didn't have like a full range of bowling balls here. We had, uh, I was using the absolute power, which is a pretty strong cover. and It's a strong ball. So we started further left than we probably would have really wanted to. And then I think I, um, I tried to go over the fronts in the third game. And then one shot, it just hooked as soon as it hit the lane. So I thought, if the further left I get, the harder it's going to be to actually go through them. So I thought, maybe I'll throw it back up. And then actually, the one that I split bowling back up, I thought, oh, it's inside. It should be fresh on that side of the lane. Yeah. So uh, forgive me for all the left-handers when I've trashed you in the past. Your lanes aren't that easy. You still have to make a shot. All right. And, and uh, how many 300 games throwing a backup ball for you? Oh, I don't know. Um, a couple. Yeah, there's been a few, but on the PBA Tour, n none on the PBA Tour. But there's been a few around there. When they're a little right. softer like this, you can get away with it. All right. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Okay. Best of luck next week at the U.S. Open, Indianapolis. Yeah, I appreciate it. Right? Thank you for having me here in the Chicago land area to bowl this. Uh, I've heard so much about this tournament for a really long time, so it was really awesome. And... Uh, yeah, I hope I get to come back one day. Awesome. Thanks to all four of our players. I'm going to introduce Keith Hamilton, who's going to say a few words for you, folks. Keith, come on up. Randy, thank you so much. You know, I, I know you're used to bowling for a few thousand dollars at a time. I appreciate all that. But we just want to give you a little, a very little small token of our appreciation for everything that you've done. I know you're going to like carrying that across uh, on your plane travels. Kerry, this is for you. Thank you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the, Mr. Bill Duff has been the longest standing executive director in Illinois State proprietor history of 27 years. He just retired. Can you please give him a round of applause? And jo Josh, this is for you. And Abigail. And Randy, I'm sorry. But we really appreciate you being here. And whether you like it or not, you're going to have to put this in your suitcase and take it home. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, cut. Okay, so now that the 